Um, I'm just going to talk you through um, how you might want to go about approaching each of the three questions that you've got on your cap for this week. Um, first thing to say is that you've got um, three four mark questions um, for your first set of questions. These are uh, the most straightforward type of question that you'll get in your A-level paper. They are probably the sorts of questions that you are most familiar with. Um, very often testing a very specific piece of knowledge and getting you to um, explain or outline um, one particular concept or theory. Um, so broadly speaking, the format um, that you use to answer each of the three questions on your cap for this week um, is the same for each of the questions. Just to say a little bit about um, the amount that you need to be writing, um, the four mark questions are point marked. So um, you get a mark basically for making a valid point um, in relation to the question. Um, and you can also get additional marks for exemplifying that point or developing it um, in a little bit more detail. So it's not that you've got to say four separate things, um, but you have got to make four detailed points. So these are kind of four substantial sentences um, that you need to be writing um, about the topic in question. Okay, so it's worth remembering that probably um, three or four lines of, of text um, if you're typing it, slightly more if you're handwriting it, um, but that's what you should be looking to write um, for each of these responses. So if we turn our attention to question one, question one says to outline the main stores within the water cycle. Um, so it's worth remembering that when we are outlining, we are briefly describing something at that point. We are um, trying to just give a little bit of context, trying to give a kind of broad picture of what something is like. Um, in this case, what are the main stores of water in the water cycle? It's really important that this is you do not mistake outline with being the same as list. So I do not want to see um, a little bullet pointed list of all the stores of the water within the water cycle. I want you to identify some of them and then give me a little bit of context. How is the water stored there? How much water is stored there? Um, how important is that store of water? Um, so maybe including some specifics like percentages um, or some context in that way would be really, really helpful. So remember that is not the same as just listing the stores within the water cycle. Um, question two um, is asking you to explain the concept um, of feedback within a system. So when we have an explanation question, we want to make sure that we're giving reasons how or why something happens or the impact it has. So make sure you've got a nice, clear explanation of exactly what feedback is within a system. What causes it? What happens when a feedback loop starts to occur? Um, Within this question, it would be silly not to consider both types of feedback. Um, remember, there are positive and negative feedbacks, and we'd want to give some context about both of those probably to answer this question um, in full. So think about positive feedback, how that works, um, and then maybe think about backing that up with an example. Um, link that to something that we've looked at in class or something that you've studied in geography before where it has that positive um, feedback effect. Likewise for negative feedback, make sure you give a good explanation and ideally back that up um, with an example. So that should cover you for your, uh, for your four marks on those things. Um, the final question um, is to explain the role of cryospheric change in the water cycle. Um, now, on the face of it, this question might look quite terrifying because it's got words in there like cryospheric change that you might um, feel that you've only just got your head around. But it's worth unpicking this question a little bit. OK, so firstly, thinking about what do we know about that word cryosphere? Well, we know that refers to all of the water um, in a frozen state. OK, so glaciers, ice caps, snow, that's all part of the cryosphere. Um, and we need to think about what processes cause change within the cryosphere. And then think about how that impacts on water stores or transfers. So what actually happens for um, a glacier or an ice sheet to grow or shrink in size? How does that transfer water um, from one store to another? So let's say 
um, as temperatures get warmer and ice sheets melt and um, water is released from the melting of those ice sheets where does it go it's not lost from the water cycle it's just moved from one store to another so think about how um, change in the cryosphere in one store yeah, the store of snow and ice and permafrost how can that have an impact on other parts of the water cycle so you might want to go back and have a look at your notes about um, cryospheric change and cryospheric processes um, and just get your head around those um, and think about the impact that they have on the stores and transfers of water within the water cycle hopefully that's been useful to help you just get started on this first set of questions You'll get plenty of practice on these, so don't worry um, if you're finding it a little bit difficult. Have a go um, and come and find your teacher if you're not sure.